Jamaica Riots Hello, folks. Have you ever witnessed a riot? If yes, then you know how it feels to be in a place where life is in constant threat and you are just helpless because you don't have any control over the situation. In today's video, we are going to look at an iconic riot that happened in the year 532 AD, the Nika Riot. But before we move forward, if you are watching this channel for the first time, then subscribe to the channel for more such factual videos. Also, hit the bell icon so that you get a notification whenever we upload a new video. What is the Nika Riot? The emperor of the Byzantine Empire was the subject of a five-day riot called the Nika Revolt. One of the most devastating events in Byzantine history happened when the revolt intensified. The majority of the city's buildings were damaged or destroyed. The Hippodrome of Constantinople was used for chariot racing and was the beginning of the rioting. It had a capacity for 100,000 spectators and served as a sporting and societal hub. The Romans and Byzantines considered chariot racing to be a core part of their culture. Local fans supported their favorite team by wearing their team colors. The teams that made up the major teams were the whites, blues, reds, and greens. Team associations were known to have a large influence on political issues and decisions. Many people were rumored to have participated in street gangs. It was important for the emperor to maintain a good relationship with the four groups. The members of the Blues and Greens were sentenced to death after they were arrested in connection to several murders. The crowds wanted Justinian to pardon their offenses. He was able to compromise by changing the sentence to imprisonment, but it was not enough. There was tension with the people because of the new taxes introduced by Justinian. The Beginning of the Riot On January 13, 532 AD, when the chariot races were to start, members of both the Blues and the Greens loudly pleaded with the Emperor to show mercy to the two men that Fortune had rescued from the gallows. Both groups started to cry out, Nika, Nika, when no response was forthcoming. This chant used to be used in support of one chariot or another, but was now used against Justinian. The mob took to the streets after violence erupted at the Hippodrome. The first objective was to get the headquarters of Constantinople's police department and the municipal jail Praetorian. The prisoners were released by the rioters, and the building was set on fire. The Hagia Sophia and other great buildings in the city were destroyed in a fire. Riot turned into rebellion. It is not clear how soon members of the aristocracy became involved, but by the time the city was on fire, there were signs that the incident was going to be used to overthrow an unpopular emperor. Justinian tried to appease his opposition by agreeing to remove those responsible for carrying out unpopular policies from office. Rioting continued even after this gesture of conciliation was rejected. The estimable soldier and the emperor's troops failed in quelling the riot when Justinian ordered General Belisarius to do so. While the riot raged and the city burned, Justinian and his closest supporters stayed in the palace. On January 18, the emperor tried again to find a compromise. He appeared in the Hippodrome and all of his offers were turned down. The nephew of the late Emperor Anastasius I, Hypatius, was proposed as a candidate for the emperor by the rioters. There was a political coup taking place. Now that you have come halfway to this video, Hit the like button if you have liked it so far, also subscribe to the channel, and press the bell icon, so you don't miss out on any videos. Involvement of Hypatius Hypatius had never been a serious contender for the throne, even though he was related to a previous emperor. He had led an undistinguished career, first as a military officer, and now as a senator, and was probably content to remain out of the spotlight. According to Procopius, Justinian's friend Hypatius and his brother Pompeius had stayed in Justinian's palace during the riot, until the emperor got suspicious of them and their vague connection to the purple, and kicked them out. The brothers were worried that they would be used by the rioters and the anti-Justinian group. That is exactly what happened. According to Procopius, his wife, Mary, took hold of Hypatius and wouldn't let go until the crowd overwhelmed her, and her husband was carried to the throne. Theodora's Encouragement when Hypatius was born, the Hippodrome was once again left by Justinian and his group. The revolt was getting out of hand, and there was no way to control it. The emperor and his associates started talking about leaving the city. They were persuaded to stand firm by Justinian's wife, Theodora. According to Procopius, she told her husband, the present time, above all others, is an opportune for flight, even though it brings safety. For one who has been an emperor, it is unendurable to be a fugitive, Consider whether it will not come about after you have been saved and you would gladly exchange that safety for death. 
As for myself, I approve of a certain ancient saying that royalty is a good burial shroud. Justinian rose to the occasion because he was shamed by her words and inspired by her courage. Two of the emperor's best generals entered the Hippodrome through separate entrances, trapping the mob inside, and in the end, not one of the citizens, either of the Greens or of the Blues, who were in the Hippodrome, survived. More than 30,000 people perished that day, including Procopius, Theophanes, and the Chronic and Pascal. When Hypatius was executed, many of his associates were tortured and their property was seized. Although the chariot races were not held for a long time, peace was restored. Riot being settled. The Hippodrome was closed, and races were stopped for five years. Even though no one was willing to move against him, he was able to go ahead with his plans to rebuild the city, conquer territory in Italy, and complete his law codes. The Church of Hagia Sophia, which was rebuilt six weeks later, was consecrated five years later. In buildings, it is described by Procopius. The Nika revolt didn't work out as planned. Justinian had overcome his enemies and enjoyed a long and fruitful reign, even after he was brought to the brink of destruction. And that's it for the day. Which part of the video amazed you the most? Tell us in the comments. Stay tuned with facts, folks, and fun, for more such content. Also, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and press the bell icon so you don't miss out on any video. Do share the video with your friends.